Hello and welcome back to part 3 of this video tutorial series on how to create a blog website using Gatsby.js. In the last video we created the application itself, we changed the icon and title, and we deleted a few files that we don't need. Now before we start working in this video, I want to I wanna do something. So let's uh, stop the development server and let's initialize a git repository by running git init. Now, Git is a really fantastic tool. If you're not using it yet, start using it. It's brilliant. It's really good practice for developers to keep track of your code, what's changing, and uh, record everything. And in case you mess up, you can go back and a bunch of other cool features. So Gatsby creates this git ignore, git ignore file for us that ignores uh, the node modules um, directory and a bunch of other directories and potential files that can be created that are just log files that we don't need to track. So that's brilliant. So let's add all files by typing git add dash, I mean not dash dot. And let's do our first commit. So git commit dash m for message. And our message would be what we actually did last time. So created, let's not say create app, let's just say, um, deleted files and um, what did we do? Changed icon and title and that's it. So we have our commit. So let's start uh, adding some more things to our application. So our application is pretty simple right now. We need to add uh, our pages, which are three pages. We should add them here in the source pages folder. So let's add about.js for the about page tags.js for that and team.js so team.js now we're doing lowercase uh, we're naming them lowercase uh, even though if you've used react before there's this this common convention to name with the uppercase but here because it's server rendered and this actually represents a path in the url let's just keep it lowercase just to avoid confusion because uppercase urls are never good never a good idea so let's put some content in these. So let's copy the stuff from index and let's type, let's paste it in starting with the about page. Let's do control D here and let's name this about page. Let's change the title to about and change the header to about us. Uh, we're just doing some uh, basic content in these pages so that we can differentiate between them. So tags page here. The title of the page would be tags and the header would say tags, sorry, tags page. If I can type tags page, there we go. So let's again paste the same thing in team and let's control D, call this uh, team page and the title would be team and the header would say our team. Uh, this should create these pages, so let's start the development server again by running Gatsby, develop, and uh, we should see now these pages when we browse to the uh, respective paths. If we wait for it to compile, and it has done compiling, let's control click here. We have two open, let's close one. So if we now browse to slash about, we should see that page. Brilliant. We should see the tags page. And as well, we should see the team page. There we go. But there's a problem now. If we go to the home page, we should, we should have links to the other pages. We shouldn't have to type the URL ourselves. So let's add uh, a nav bar to do that. But before we add a nav bar, what we need to do is, um, I'm going to be using Bootstrap and I'm going to be using some custom SCSS files, but I don't want to waste too much time writing a CSS. So I've already written the whole theme for this website and I'm going to post a link in the description for the Git repository for you to get all these custom stylings. It's not much. It's just a bit of SAS to make it look better. And, uh, yeah. So if you clone that or you just download the zip file, you will get something like this. So let's copy all of these files. And let's go to our project directory uh, by run start dot, which is going to open that in the in the thing in the an explorer window. Let's go to source, and we already have a styles folder. Yeah, okay. Just if you don't, just create a styles folder and add those files in there. 
and we should see them right here. So we have our styling here. All you need to look at is, so we've got different files that style different things and we have an index, uh, an index file which brings all of these in, including bootstrap, which we haven't in installed yet. So let's install that. So let's, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to stop the development server and install two things actually. So we're going to install bootstrap and we're going to install some cool library called react strap. Now, while that installs, let me uh, talk a bit about bootstrap. Well, not a bit, just, just a tiny bit. If you don't know what that is already, bootstrap is an amazing uh, CSS uh, framework that has a lot of really cool things that you can use without writing, reinventing the wheel yourself, like nav bars, uh, the grid system, modals, uh, animations, buttons, all this stuff. It's, it's, it's quite amazing. Oh, and different colors and all of that. And React Strap is a cool uh, React library that lets us use uh, Bootstrap elements and Bootstrap classes as uh, React components. For example, here. So in order to use a button, instead of doing uh, input with a class button or class BTN, we just import button from the library React uh, Strap and we just add this component, button component. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's making things a bit more clear now uh, in code. So, uh, that's done installing. So we should have bootstrap already, but this is not going to work. We need to import this file. So if we go to layout, don't know why I opened all these folders and we import our styling. So let's do import. We go back one level. So dot dot and to the directory styles and our index.scss. Now, this is not going to work because this is a CSS. Uh, React or Gatsby by default doesn't compile SAS to, uh, a C to CSS. So let's install something called Gatsby um, pl plugin SAS, which as the name suggests is a plugin to compile SAS into uh, CSS. And this needs as well another plugin called Node SAS, which it's gonna use to uh, compile SAS to CSS. Now, as if you remember, like I said before, each time you install a Gatsby plugin, we need to add it to the to the plugin array here. And that's as simple as just adding Gatsby plugin SAS here in this array and saving. Uh, let me close all of these, it's getting a bit overwhelming. <laughs> so while it installs, it's done installing and you can check that it's, it should add it here. Yep. And there we go. We have our, where is it? Here, SAS, SAS plugin and we have node SAS. So now if we start Gatsby develop, start the development server, we should change, we should see some changes in styling because we brought all these stylings. And um, we don't have a lot of content right now. What we see is that probably what we see is the change in font because I brought in railway, font railway here in the variables uh, module and I changed all, um, let's check it out. Yeah, okay, yeah. So now it's railway and everything is in the middle because of the custom styling and uh, yeah, if you look here, you can have a look through the SAS to understand what I actually uh, changed. If you look and see here, why do I have two body rules? That's funny. So <laughs> let me just cut, pay, cut that and put it here because there's no need for me to have two rules or not two rules to, well, you know what I mean. So <laughs> here is site font, which is this variable, just re which just refers to railway. So anything within the body uh, element will have this font. So now let's create this navbar. If we have a look at the uh, documentation for React Strap, we get this uh, cool components tab and we can see all the stuff that we can uh, create using React Strap, all the, re the strap, the strap, the bootstrap elements that we can bring in as components. So if we scroll down and click on navbar, this shows us how to actually implement a uh, navbar in our website. So let's start implementing the navbar so but before we do that actually i want to edit something so in the layout 
I want to remove this um, style tag for our uh, layout main div and let's add a class and remember in react a class is class name because this is JSX and not standard HTML so class name of container which is a, a bootstrap thing that uh, pushes all the content to the middle and change the size as you change screen size because it makes it responsive and let's add an ID content because this has to do with uh, with some of the CSS or SAS that I wrote and if we go to header this is where our navbar will go let's put these side by side and let's bring in the navbar so I'm gonna remove all of this because we don't need this I don't think we need links because I'm gonna use some react strap stuff uh, I'm gonna leave prop, tra prop types uh, let's bring in all this stuff for a navbar you know, I think I'm not gonna need some of this stuff, but uh, but let's leave it for now. Let's bring in this div, and actually, let's bring in everything inside of this class. And I'm gonna explain in a moment what this means. So we're gonna need to manage some state. So we're gonna change this from a functional component to a class-based component. So let's do class header extends oops extends react dot component. Did I misspell something? React dot component. No that's fine. Oh <laughs> this needs to be a block of uh code like this yeah there should be a, there shouldn't be any error now but we need to change a couple of things because we don't need a navbar that looks like this so first of all let's get rid of the drop downs because we don't need them let's get rid of this drop down menu let's get rid of this drop down uncontrolled drop down thingy and what we have what do we change let's make it expand on a small screen and let's let's remove this color light because we got our own styling and let's have it fixed at the top so that even when we scroll down we still see the navbar and what do i change here the the brand should be the title so this dot props because we pass this down from the layout and this should be this dot props the site title and this toggler, by the way, this is on a small screen. This is just some logic to uh, toggle uh, the menu on a small screen to open up uh, the, the collapse menu. I'll, I'll show you once we run the application. And our links need to be, we don't have a link to components. We need a link to team, which says team. And let's just actually copy that and change it. So we have two more. One that goes to tags. It says tags here. And one that goes to about and says about here. Um, this should be fine. ML auto because we want them to to go to the right and uh, let's remove all the stuff that we're not using from react strap and I think this is it so let's save and let's look at the changes let's look at our application so if we go here still open there's a problem which is in my in my constructor I'm calling super props what is the problem actually? Is it this props? It's fine, I'll just cut that part.
Okay, so the problem was that we just needed to stop the server and start again for some reason. So it works now. So there we go. We have our navbar with the links that we just set. And if we click on our links, it goes, if we click on tags, it goes to the tags page. And if we click on about, it goes to that. So our navbar is working now. The navbar head, um, the navbar brand takes us to the home page. So that's brilliant. But if you notice, there's a problem. If we click on a link, it reloads the whole page. So like that. We don't want that. So because this is a single page application. One of the main attractions of this, of a single page application is that it, it browses without reloading the page with a push state. So let's solve that by adding a plugin called, I hope I don't mess this up, npm install, uh, is it Gatsby plugin? I think it's Gatsby plugin catch links catch dash links. Um, yeah, okay, we found it. Yeah, it's this, this plugin will now uh, collect all this, the links in the pages and each time you click on one link, it doesn't browse with the browser, it just uh, uh, does a push state uh, thing which just changes and edits the DOM um, to that page in without reloading the whole page, making it an actual single page application. So let's add that to our configuration file. So we go to Gatsby config, and let's just add that here. So Gatsby dash plugin dash catch dash links. And let's do a comma here. And well, our server is not started, so it's okay. We don't have to restart it. We we'll just do Gatsby develop. And let's see if that problem is fixed. Well, it should be fixed. So we'll let it compile. And we reload or re re it reloads on its own. And there we go. Now, if we click on the links, it doesn't reload the page, just browses there, including the home page. So, so yeah, so that's our navbar. Um, down, navbar down with the links. In the next video, we're going to start creating posts, the blog posts, and we're going to show them on the, uh, on the website. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're coding along and you're learning and uh, if you're feeling a bit confused, don't worry. It will make sense and with practice and time, you will get the hang of it. So uh, just keep on hacking, I guess. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.